Hey guys, happy Splasher here. Good evening. <laughs> so yeah, right now we're going to do, I believe this is what, day two? I, I I just woke up. This is Tuesday, right? So it has to be, yeah. This is day two <laughs> of the pit run for this week. So yeah, we are currently on the boss, Sybil Dark Whisper. Let's take a look at her skills. All right, so whenever an ally pierce triggers, it will deal damage to the enemy warlord. Every six turn, we'll summon a ghosta. Okay, and on the ghost of death, it will kill the enemy warlord. Okay, so a couple of things. Looks like they're going to have heroes with pierce, and then we're going to take extra damage to our warlord whenever pierce happens. So we'll need to find a way to heal or avoid that damage. On top of that, they're going to summon a ghost up. We don't know what exactly their skills are going to be, but if it's anything like the original ghost unit, it will be a hero that deals extra damage to our warlord when we're attacked. We'll take damage to our heroes when we attack their warlord, and then there will also be a little bit of pierce on the ghost as well. And then on top of that, it says when the ghost dies, it kills the enemy warlord. So it looks like if we end up killing the ghost on the the one that comes out on the sixth turn, we might end up losing. So we'll have to find a way to play around that, probably just by not destroying it or having to set up our heroes in such a way that we don't end up attacking that ghost. So yeah, so let us hop right in. Currently using the pirate skin along with the Gleedy Bat. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the buildings that we have on the board. All right, seeing if there's anything that could affect us in any way. Some extra damage off of a hero being killed. And then also at the end of the turn, we also have these attack runes and then pierce runes. And these pierce runes will actually help for that extra damage here. All right, we're going to go start with our damage pentagrams first. And we see here we have double coverage over here on lanes A and B, so that is good. I think I'm going to go hard on this particular boss just because I'm not sure how exactly that ghost is going to affect us. So in this case, we're going to go with our legendary over here on B3, yeah. or B1 rather. This one summons two puppets that will allow us to reflect some damage, also remove negative effects. And then also have some blockers over here. We got this melee here over here, deals adjacent damage, also has pierce, and well, the pierce from the rune rather, so that's why we took some damage. Okay, next turn we are going to be able to summon our sharks, so we need to leave at least one melee spot open. Uh, although it could potentially get blocked by the puppets that we do end up summoning, so probably better just to summon a range hero and go from there. So in this case, going to summon this range hero over here on C1 with protection behind the melee here. Okay, and looks like these two melee spots are open, so we can do our shark summons, which is good. <laughs> okay, you got this uh, prophet over here. This one does pierce damage, also deals damage to our range heroes. Okay, looks like another puppet is gone. That's fine. Going to do the shark summon now. Okay, with that, we'll be able to clear this and also deal some more damage. And then also going to do a range summon, actually. We'll do a range summon over here on A1, just to balance out the amount of damage we can deal to the warlord. Also getting rid of the common at the same time. Okay, we have this range here over here. Summons Rotter in front of itself. Also gets an attack boost at the end of the turn. It, uh, it is on the damage pentagram, so we don't have to worry about that. And we actually have combat to destroy that anyways. We're going to go continue on and summon another range hero, and this time we'll actually summon it over here on uh, D2, just so we can get some more lanes open for combat. At this point now, because of the Madam Lotrix, we have these extra puppets on the field as well, so all our lanes are now guarded. Okay, we've got this melee hero here, came into play with Pierce and also uh, Metal Shield, but because of our shark actually having counterattack, that is why the shield is now gone. So let's just see here. We have combat over here. We have this, this, and this. So four. Yeah, we have enough damage here for lethal anyways. Uh, I do actually want to showcase what the ghost is going to look like. So I think what we're going to do is we're just going to take... We're going to deal this damage over here and then we'll surrender just so that we can show you what the ghost looks like. Going to also summon this common just to get rid of it out of the way. All right, there we go. So as you can see, we can do lethal damage, but we surrender just before so we can actually uh, keep on going with this battle. All right, so I'm going to do battle number two here. Might potentially have to do a third battle because we are going to try to stick around long enough for the Ghosta. So in this case, I'm just going to go with our melee heroes. We're actually not going to do our damage pentagrams as we don't need to... Go for lethal so early. 
So let's see, I'm going to actually shuffle for a melee hero. And also what I'm doing too is this is another way to actually get rid of your weaker heroes. If you have enough strength for your warlord and the pet as well. So in this case, I'm going to play this melee hero here. We'll actually block this melee hero from attacking. Again, we're just doing this so that we can draw up that Ghosta and then show you what the stats look like. So we'll do another shuffle. Looking for some weaker heroes. This is fine. We'll summon this melee hero over here on C2. I guess we can take a look at some of the other heroes. So this one here freezes a random enemy in line. Got it. At the beginning of the turn. Summon... Do one more shuffle, see if we can find another weaker hero. Oh, this one is very weak. Great. <laughs> okay, uh, this one is also relatively weak. We're going to place it here in the D2. Again, so that we, we can actually deal less damage to the Warlord. <laughs> and we'll place this final one over here. Alright, so as you'll see, the Ghost will come up. Here are the stats of the Ghosta. So as you can see, it deals extra damage whenever we attack the enemy warlord. We'll take extra damage when one of the enemies attack. And then also has some pierce as well. Okay, well in this case now, since we've already drawn the Ghosta. Oh right, so the other skill too. Yeah, I guess we can showcase this. So if we end up destroying this Ghosta, we will take lethal. And I will show you how. So just any regular attack. And, oh, well, looks like we lost. <laughs> That's okay, though. Only for purposes of this video. Okay, so I will do one more attempt over here just to get rid of the Sybil Dark Whisper. And this one won't be too in-depth. It'll just be more of using heroes that we don't mind losing out of our squad. And this is okay. Alright, so in this case, going to go with this range here over here, just to clear this out. That's why I mentioned at the very beginning of this video that I wanted to make sure that we did as much damage over to this boss as possible, because we didn't want to see that ghost to come out and play. Okay, this one's clears out. 36, that looks a little different. Again, spreading under damage, so that way if one lane is blocked, we can still deal damage to the Warlord. As you can see right here. So 95, yep. We have lethal here. We'll use this other... We'll use our shuffles now to get rid of some bad heroes. This one's pretty weak, so we'll summon this. And lethal, there you go. Okay, so that was Sybil Dark Whisper. Let's see what we get for rewards. Epic! Okay, got some uh, Storm Rage. Uh, epic Storm Rage, so not bad. Okay, um, you know, so we're currently out of attempts right now, just because I started this at the end of the day, uh, as opposed to the beginning. So maybe I'll just, uh, let's see, the six here. Oh, you know, I'm not, I'm not actually going to be able to do this today, or even tomorrow, potentially because of the, how late I started. So that is fine. I guess I'll tack it on to another video, and we'll, uh, yeah, we'll continue on the run from there. So yeah, well, we'll check back in once that happens, and we'll see you guys later. This is Happy Splasher, signing off. Hey guys, Happy Splasher here. Good evening. So right now I'm going to continue on that next boss we had for our video series. So yeah, we are going to continue here with uh, Melee Moonfan. Let's take a look at her skills. Alright, so whenever any melee hero appears, we'll give Mental Shield to melee allies. All right, uh, next is ally mental shield is gone, gives negative attack to ranged enemies. Okay, and then on the seventh turn, we'll deal damage to ranged enemies. So a couple things, looks like they will have a lot of mental shield to their melee heroes whenever we summon or they summon a melee hero. So we'll need to both have heroes that can potentially have extra attacks or stack heroes on the same line, or perhaps we'll summon more ranged heroes. So that way we don't trigger off the mental shield skill. Another thing too is that whenever a mental shield is gone from the enemy side, we'll give negative attack to our ranged heroes. So if we can have heroes with either immunity or attack boost, that would help us out a lot. And then on top of that, on the seventh turn, we're going to take damage to our ranged heroes. So by the seventh turn, we want to have as few ranged heroes on the board, and then maybe we might want to save them for afterwards. Uh, so yeah, so let's uh, hop right in.
Okay, again, still using the pirate and the glee pet. All right, so we have a couple of buildings on the board. Some negative attack. All right. Oh, we got some damage. All right. We also have some magic spots here. Then some runes as well. We're going to start with our damage pattern grabs first. And then we see here we have double coverage over here on lane B. So we want to summon heroes over there. Let's see, do we want to protect this building? Nah, that's all right. Okay, you know, going to go with this range hero here with the high health first on lane B. And then also getting a little bit of protection with the building here. This one here will summon a rotter whenever one of our heroes are attacked. Uh, we've got this melee hero over here. We'll give bleeding to our heroes when they come to play. We'll also do uh, attack steal. And then also the mental shield given because of the skill here. So going to continue. Let's see here. You know, we can just go with this range hero over here on D2. <clears throat> this one has high health. This one also has poison skill off, be off of the rune. Whoa! Then we can also block because of the flight as well. Oh, you know what? This, this hero is actually going to be giving them mental shield because of its skill. All right, so we have the range hero over here. This one gives a uh, vampirism to one of the melee enemies. So in this case, this here. I guess we can actually go with our shark summon and see where the mental shield can go up. All right, so it's only on the melee heroes, which is fine. We'll continue and we'll summon a range hero over here on D1. So that way we can actually attack this. Not too concerned with this range hero right now. Yeah. Want to make sure that we can actually deal attacks. So we have this range hero. This one gives splash to chaos, and then also has a death trigger to deal damage to our warlord. And you see, you have some of <clears throat> those negative attacks over here. Okay, and well, I guess we can continue on with metal shield at this point because well, we can summon more melee heroes now because they don't have any melee heroes on their side. So we'll do that. We'll go over. I guess we'll actually go over here on C3 just to protect this building. Also, get rid of this other building. Okay, taking some damage, but that's okay. Okay, this hero here will deal damage whenever their allies are attacked. We'll also get Metal Shield at the end of the turn. Okay, you know, we can go with this melee hero over here on a three. Whoa! Looking to get rid of this range hero now. Okay, you got this melee hero. This has a death trigger to deal damage to one of our wounded heroes, which in this case will be any one of these three. I'm going to go with this melee hero actually over... Here. Let's see. Well, that makes sense. Uh, you know, actually going to go with this melee hero over here on D3. This one can deal extra damage to the warlord for every enemy that's on the field. And rather go for damage. Uh, don't need to deal with these heroes quite yet. Okay, so next turn we're going to take damage to our ranged heroes. So these will be... Uh, this will be destroyed. This one has bleeding, so it will be destroyed very soon. Uh, this melee hero here will make the enemy bleed. Come, we'll go through here. Uh, this is fine. We can actually... We'll take the dam... No, no, you know, we won't take the damage first. We can actually give the attack boost to our melee heroes, which in this case are all of them. We'll be able to deal a little bit more damage over to the Warlord. And then we can follow up with... Well, we don't want to summon a range hero on this turn. So in this case, we can just go for a melee hero. And this one is okay for now. Going to go over here on B3 just to deal some damage to the warlord. Okay, and see that skill did go off, and then our range heroes took him. Okay, we will continue to summon... Uh, you know, we can actually su just summon range heroes at this point, so we'll do that. So we're going to summon this hero with the low attack and place it over here on A2. I guess we could actually have gotten another order hero so that we can have this hero attack another time and then just go for lethal there. So what we'll actually do is we will try for that. We'll go for a shuffle, see if we can get a ranged order hero. So that way we can trigger off the legion attack skill. Looks like we do. So in this case, going to summon over here on A1 so that way we can trigger off the extra attack. Yeah! <laughs> 
Okay, uh, we have another one of those half moon priestesses, the ones with the metal shield and the also the extra damage. Um, I'm gonna go with this melee hero actually over here on D3 just because of the low attack. Just want to get rid of our squad. And there you go. We got an attack boost from the Legion, and once a enemy was destroyed, that order hero got an attack boost. All right, so let's see what we have for rewards here. Epic. Okay, got some Epic Koshi and Epic, eh, epic Praying Mantis, so that's okay. Well, we're actually going to save this boss for the next set of videos, which will happen pretty soon. Um, yeah, the, the, we're going to be grouping those together for the next series. So yeah, we'll see you guys later. This is Happy Splasher, signing off.